It's this one. It's just extra wide masking tape. And why it's that particular tape will take a little bit of explaining. And I should say that there are reasons that it might not be the right tape for you. I bet you never knew that tape was such serious business. So yeah, in the spirit of trying to do justice to this thing, I've tried a number of different tapes in the last few weeks, some of which I've used before, some of which I haven't. We've got a sample size of one, so it's very scientific. Um, and if it sounds crazy to you to make a whole video just on the topic of tape, then don't worry, you're right. But it's also crazy how many other things this actually connects to. It's a can of worms and I've had to make notes. So the main purpose of tape is to hold the paper to the board. Trust me, I've looked it up. And when you add water to cotton paper, it's going to swell, it's going to change shape. And then the area in the middle that's absorbed more water is going to expand more than the areas under the tape. And that's not a problem if you stretch your paper, but a lot of people out there don't like to stretch their paper. And they are wrong and I am one of them. Um, I don't stretch my paper either, but I use 300 pound paper, which is very heavy, and I almost never deal with any kind of warping or buckling. There have been a couple of times where there have been issues, particularly on larger paintings, but that has generally been because I've added too much water, so that's essentially my fault. And the reason I say all this is because if you're like me and you don't stretch your paper, then you need a pretty sturdy tape because the paper is going to be expanding and contracting and the tape still needs to be strong enough to hold the paper in place against the board and to counteract those forces. Which leads nicely into the other thing that people want from tape very often, which is nice clean edges underneath the tape and no damage to the paper once the tape's been removed. Now, at this point, if you stretch your paper, then you're laughing. It's probably fair to say that you have more flexibility because you know that when you add the water to the paper, it's not going to expand as much or change shape to the same degree. And so you can use more different kinds of tapes, ones that aren't necessarily as strong. But if you're awkward, well, let's put it this way. You want a tape that's strong, and will grip the paper to the board firmly, but will come off nice and easily and leave no trace that it was ever there. Well, that's just easy, isn't it? Okay, so it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's talk about different kinds of tape. To start with, I picked up blue painter's tape, and I didn't pick this up expecting to like it. I got it because I know it's where a lot of other people start, or it's tape that a lot of people try at some point just from YouTube comments. Another tape that I picked up was this one, which is a blue painter's tape, except that it's green. Now initially, I thought both of these tapes are probably about the same kind of thing. Uh, as it turns out, we know the green one is better than the blue one because it says so right here on the lid. Now, in all seriousness, these kinds of tape are probably great if you want to paint your house. I wouldn't really use them with watercolors. The reason is the bond is very strong. There's no doubt about that. It's very difficult not to damage your paper when you remove them, though. In fact, these tapes have damaged paintings that I've used them for more than any other kind of tape I've ever used. It's not such an issue for me personally if a tape damages the surface of the paper when I take it off, because if I'm going to frame it, then I'll probably be cropping the edges of the painting off anyway. However, these tapes didn't just damage the paper under where the tape was, they actually pulled paper out of the painting itself, areas that the tape didn't even connect to. So that's really not good. That means you're running the risk of taking huge chunks of your painting out. Now, I'm sure some of you out there will have used it and will not have had the same experience that I've had, but just know it is possible that it can happen because it's happened to me. The other thing I noticed is that there was some bleeding issues, uh, particularly with the green tape, where it seemed to be absorbing water underneath the tape that I couldn't absorb through the top and you don't want to leave it like that because it will bloom outwards and we're going to talk more about that later on. The way to avoid it is to try and absorb 
the water back up through the tape, but it seemed like particularly on the green one, there was this almost waterproof surface on the top and water just couldn't really get back up. What that meant was that when the painting was left to dry, it would bloom back out into the painting. That's not what you want to happen. Then there's washi tape. Now washi tape is a Japanese tape made from paper and it's not one that I've used before and I'll tell you a little bit about why. You can usually tell it's washi tape though because it comes in all these kind of cute designs. My issue with washi tape is that it's essentially at the other end of the spectrum to the painter's tape we've just used. It is not a strong tape, it doesn't have a strong adhesive on it, it's actually very weak. Now if you stretch your paper, or if you don't wet the whole page at once and you only use small amounts of water, washi tape might work absolutely fine for you. But it's not strong enough for me and there's just too much movement in the paper. It tends to give up quite quickly and I also suspect that the thickness of the paper is a factor as well. With thinner paper it might not be as much of an issue. This stuff is great for general arts and crafts and it can absolutely be used for watercolour painting. I've seen watercolourists use this with Great success, again, thinner paper, less water, people who stretch their paper ahead of time. But if you use this in a different way and have success with it, then let me know, I'd be interested to hear. And that leaves us with the final two contestants, magic scotch tape and extra wide masking tape. These might look familiar if you've watched any videos on my channel before, because these are the two kinds of tape that I use all the time. What a surprise. But there is a key difference between them that's worth bearing in mind. There's nothing fancy about either of these though, and it is possible to take them both off the paper without doing damage. You can do damage with them if you're quick and rough, but if you take your time with it, they will peel off. They won't cause damage. They are both strong as well. Not as strong as the painter's tape, but a lot stronger than the washi tape. Now you might be thinking when I say there's a key difference between them that Yes, obviously one's wider than the other one. That's true, it's not the key difference. I can't find a wide version of Magic Scotch Tape, but if I could then I would be using it. The wider tape actually helps with larger paintings. The larger the painting is, the more water goes on, the more movement there is, the longer the sides of the painting, so the more support is needed. The wider tape just seems to hold out a little bit better on those paintings than the thinner one does. I would use the wide tape with small paintings as well, it's not that it's only usable with large paintings. The difference between these is something that we mentioned earlier, it's the absorption. This masking tape can absorb the water and it can go both ways. This scotch tape can't. Now there's a couple of things to say about this. If the tape can't absorb water, well that might seem like a good thing because you're going to avoid the blooming situation that I mentioned earlier. We don't need to worry about the tape releasing that water back into the painting. However, it does mean you have to be a lot cleaner. Any paint that gets onto the tape at the edge of the painting is just going to sit there. And then if any water gets to it, it's just going to run right back onto the painting. Now you might be thinking that's an issue you must face with all tape, and you're right, you do, but this tape has a very smooth surface and that backflow of the water just seems to happen much more easily than with other kinds of tape. So I'll use this particularly on small paintings for the most part. I have used it on larger paintings before. It doesn't work as well for sure. This I would use on any kind of painting and it really is my favourite, it's the most versatile. It is quite a porous tape which means it will absorb the water but it goes in both directions quite easily so a bit of kitchen towel running around the edge 
that's all you really need to avoid any accidents. Of course, if you're just neater than I am, then it's probably not going to be an issue. Okay, there we go, that was my manifesto on the subject of tape. Um, we'll do a quick summary. Number one, runner-up. I don't think it's fair to include washi tape in this because it just doesn't really suit what I use it for at all. I don't use either of these. Although they're equally bad, I'm going to say that the green one is more equally bad than the blue one. Of course, all this is just my opinion. It's what works for me. Feel free to disagree. And in fact, I'd love to know if you've used any of the tapes in this video yourself, or if you have a favourite kind of tape, and if it took you a long time to find it. Do you ever dream about tape? Let me know in the comments. I hope you have a great day.